Die Panzerwerkstatt Company, or the Tank Maintenance Company, was the hidden backbone of the Panzer Regiment. Its mechanics decided on the operational status of each tank, and they were the masters of improvisation and tactical support. This unit was responsible for the general maintenance of the tanks and of their armament and radio. In camps and rest areas they kept a check upon the serviceability of the vehicles of the unit to which they were attached. During this period mechanics were given advanced training through attachment to the workshop company or under the master mechanics. On the march they traveled with the tank units and dealt with any breakdowns in vehicles or equipment. In so far as these repairs could be effected in less than four hours with field equipment. If a tank broke down the repair section leader inspected it and determined the nature of the damage. If the damage warranted it, the tank was handed over to the recovery platoon to be towed away. Otherwise, a motorcycle with mechanics stayed with the tank to effect repairs, while the other elements of the repair section went on with the column. In this way, one vehicle after another of the repair section stayed behind. In the motorcycles, but if the damage was more serious, in a half-tracked vehicle. In the assembly area, the repair sections tested all tanks and equipment as to fitness for battle. Any breakdowns were reported at once. In the battle, the company repair sections were under the order of the Panzer Battalion commanders and were directed by a battalion's motor transport officer. As a rule, they followed closely behind the fighting units and ranged over the battle area looking for broken down tanks. If the tank could not be repaired on the spot, it was made towable and its position reported to the recovery platoon of the workshop company. The workshop company operated as far as 15 to 30 kilometers behind the fighting tanks of its regiment, except that the recovery platoon works in the battle area mainly to tow out disabled tanks. The workshop company handled heavier repair jobs, up to those requiring 12 hours. Jobs requiring up to 24 hours were sent back to a larger repair base. The workshop company had its own power tools, a crane and apparatus for electric welding and vulcanizing. Its platoons were often separated and operated independently. According to one captured document, a workshop company dealt with 38 tanks in 17 days under conditions where there was no shortage of spare parts. All German and even some Allied commanders stressed the efficiency of the German recovery and maintenance units. The following points were noted. The Germans used tanks to tow disabled tanks even during a battle. Instances were reported, both from France and Africa, where tanks were employed both to protect towing operations and to assist in them. The recovery platoon with its trailers was not given the whole burden of this job of salvage. 
the same principle of cooperation prevailed in repair jobs in the field. Tanks also carried many tools, spare parts, and equipment for repair work. An observer believed that the tank crews were also trained to assist the repair crews as well as to service and maintain their own vehicles. Not only was the recovery of German vehicles very efficient, but German units often sent out detachments to recover those of the enemy. For instance, a tank battalion sent out a detachment consisting of an officer, one or two NCOs, and six or eight men, transported in one or two vehicles and protected by one or two light tanks to search and recover disabled hostile vehicles. The most important mobile asset of the company was the Sonderkraftfahrzeug, so Special Purpose Vehicle 9 FAMO. It was a German half-track that saw widespread use in World War II and it was the heaviest half-track vehicle of any type built in quantity in Germany during the war years. Its main roles were as a prime mover for very heavy towed guns and as a tank recovery vehicle. Approximately 2,500 were produced between 1938 and 1945. The frame and spade at the rear of the vehicle served as an anchor when winching heavy loads such as tanks. The hinged frame was rectangular in shape and consisted of three pieces of channel section steel, two longitudinal and one or two transverse, reinforced by triangular plates. The open end of the frame was hinged to the reinforced ends of the chassis frame. The spade was attached to the free end of the frame by two removable pins. To recover a vehicle, the frame was dropped with the winch and the spade is attached to it. The winch cable was then unhooked from the frame, removed from the upper pulley and extended to the rear for coupling to the vehicle to be recovered. The FAMO also had two crane vergers. A new upper body was used for the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 9-1 with a 6-ton capacity crane in lieu of the crew's bench seat and cargo compartment. It was issued to tank maintenance units from the beginning of September of 1941. This version was very popular with maintenance personnel as it was practically irreplaceable on the battlefield due to its usefulness. An even larger 10-ton crane was fitted on the larger Sonderkraftfahrzeug 9-2, but this required outriggers to stabilize the vehicle before any operations could begin. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.